All right, we're going to look at linear first order differential equation. These are first order differential equations that we can write in the form dy dx is equal to, sorry, dy dx uh, plus p of x y is equal to f of x. Okay. So if you can have an equation in this form, first order equation in this form then that equation is definitely linear so examples would be something like um, um, let's say we have dy dx plus 2xy is equal to 0 um, so this is our P of X and this is our F of X here okay uh, I want you to notice that in addition to being linear this is also separable so we learn how to solve separable differential equations so this is separable you can solve it as a separable differential equation or you can also solve it as a, a linear a first order ODE just uh, using the methods we're going to the method we're going to introduce very soon another example let me make up an example x squared dy dx plus 2xy is equal to cosine of x hmm all right so this doesn't quite have the form so we can rewrite it let's rewrite it as um let's divide through by x squared so we're just going to assume that x squared is never a zero so we have dy dx is equal to oh no plus two over x y all right two over x y is equal to cosine x over x squared so in that case um we have this is our p of x and this is our f of x okay all right so now let's continue uh, by looking at uh, this particular example I just discovered this example has so many rich features or just one particular rich, rich feature all right so now look at the left hand side of this equation I want you to look at the left hand side left hand side just this side Ooh. think about it this is x squared times the derivative of y right plus the derivative so this is x squared, uh, x squared times the derivative of y. So it's like u times v prime plus the derivative of x squared, that's u prime times v. So this is giving you product rule, right? If this is giving you product rule, that means that we are allowed to write it as the derivative of a product that's the derivative of the product of x squared and y y being a function of x you can just write it as y or y of x and this is equal to cosine x oh if this is the case then we can actually hmm just write it as d x squared y of x I'm not gonna put the of x is equal to cosine x dx Wow look at what we did if this is the case then why can't we put an integral sign in front of each of them and then if we do that then we we end up with x squared y is equal to uh, sine x plus C so we've solved our our differential equation we've solved it so we have y is equal to 
uh, sine x plus c all over x squared. Okay, so this is our general solution. Now, guess what happened here? What happened here is that we're lucky. <laughs> We're very lucky that we're able to observe that the left-hand side is the same thing as the derivative of the product of two functions. But in general, we're not going to be this lucky. Okay? But we're going to use this, this um, lucky happenstance <laughs> to figure out or to motivate ourselves in, in uh, coming up with... Um, a method for um, for solving first order differential equations that are linear okay so let's start with a first order let's write our general first order differential equation general first order linear differential equation so if you start with dy dx plus p of x, I'm just going to write it as p, why not, we know it's p of x, times y, is equal to f, f of x, you know what, so p is not a constant, p is a function, let's write it this way, p of x, y, y is a function of x, and f of x, okay, so my goal now is I want to I want to convert this left-hand side to become the derivative of the product of two functions. That's all I want to do, okay? So I'm going to come up with a function now. I'm going to call that function mu. So think of a function. Imagine, imagine a function mu of x such that such that when I multiply it through that mu of x, I end up with uh, such that um, this is what I want, such that d, d, d dx of mu of x y is equal to some function. Uh, I want to squeeze this a little bit. Squeeze, oh no, squeeze it a little bit. I want this. This is what I want. So I want to get such that this function, d dx, mu of x, y, is just a function of x, a function of x. And if I do that, well, why am I doing it in green? I want a function of x. And if I do this, then I can integrate both sides, or I can I can take my my dx, move it to the other side, right? And then integrate both sides, just like I did before. Okay? Alright. But we don't have this function yet. So my trick now is to multiply through. I'm gonna call this asterisk. Multiply multiply asterisk by mu. Remember, I don't even know what mu is, but I'm just going to assume that function exists. So it's going to be mu of x times dy dx plus mu of x times p of x times y is equal to mu of x times f of x. Very soon, I'm going to start dropping the of x thing. So now look at what we have here. What do we have? Hmm. If I go ahead, okay, I have, okay, let me tell you what I want. Let's, let's write down what I want first, because <laughs> I want I want this to happen. So I'm going to write down what I want. I want d dx of mu and y. We know it's mu of x. I'm not going to 
to put the mu of x anymore is equal to mu of x dy dx plus mu of x p f or uh, p y okay basically i want the derivative of mu of x times y to be equal to the left hand side just like we got when we solved the problem the lucky problem that i solved before okay so i just want this side to give me to be equal to d dx of mu times y so i want it to be this that's all i want if i can get it to be that then i'm good all right but something is giving me around for my money this might not be cooperating but wait what do i know i know that d dx of mu of x times y which is the product of two functions is mu times dy dx right first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of first oh now check this out so this check this this is that and this is this so we can set them equal to each other so set mu py equal to y d mu dx right that's what i want to do so this implies this tells me that d mu dx d mu dx is equal to hmm is equal to mu mu p right because there's y on both sides and y can happily cancel out all right so now what is this this is separable separable this is very separable 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 like this <laughs> all right so since it's separable what can we do we can go ahead and solve it uh we can we know that this is one of a mu d mu is equal to integral p dx right so which gives you a natural log of mu is equal to um the integral of p dx p is a function of x mind you p is a function of x it's not a constant so this is going to give us uh that mu is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx this is mu we've gotten our mu so i'm gonna call it mu of x actually i'm gonna change it to mu of x and this makes me very happy that i found my mu that's all i want mu is called the integrating factor integrating factor okay so in order to solve with this mu now we've come up with the method to solve a method for solving first order dy dx plus p of x y is equal to f of x so the first thing you want to do is you have to put it in the standard form put in standard form in standard form so the standard form would be this form this form right here i'm gonna label it asterisk too because <laughs> it might not come in that form that's what i mean all right the second thing you must do is to find your mu of x find your integrating factor 
and we know how to find the integrating factor now. We know that mu of x, our integrating factor, is e to the integral of p of x dx. All right. Um. Don't worry about don't worry about uh, the constant of integration. Don't worry about about constant of integration and this is when you integrate integral p of x when you when you do that don't worry about the, the constant of integration the third thing is multiply both sides multiply both sides of that um by by your integrating factor by mu of x right uh, to get to get d dx integral mu of x y is equal to mu of x f of x okay get i'm going to put it in quotation because it involves working this just means you have to work until you get to this point all right and i'm gonna call this asterisk three and then you want to integrate both sides of asterisk three and you want to solve for y okay all right let's see let's try one let's start with a simple one um there's no simple one well let me do this one this one is interesting i like it but i wanted simple but you can't always get what you want in this life all right, we want to solve x dy dx minus 4y is equal to x to the power of 6 e to the power of x. All right, so the first thing you want to do is to put it in the standard form. So divide through by x, you have dy dx minus 4 over xy is equal to x to the fifth e to the x e to the power of x all right so what do we have we have our p this is our p of x and this is our f of x right p of x f of x so what's the next thing we do we find our integrating factor find your integrating factor mu of x now is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx so this is e to the integral 4 over x dx hmm this is e to the int to the 4 times the integral of 1 over x dx hmm we're going to keep going this is e to the 4 natural log of x right don't worry about c like i said then I'm going to keep going. Um, this is going to be e to the natural log of absolute value of x to the power of 4, which is just uh, x to the power of 4, right? x to the power of 4, absolute value of x to the power of 4, x to the power of 4 is the same thing, all right? Because e to the natural log of something is that thing right so e to the natural log of x to the power of 4 is x to the power of 4 all right so we have our mu of x then the next thing we want to do so we have we did the first thing the first thing above and then we found our integrating factor the next thing is to multiply both sides by the integrating factor check this out so you multiply both sides by the integrating factor you get Hmm, what do we get? We get 4, we get x to the power of 
x to the power of 4 dy dx minus 4 x to the power of 3 y is equal to x to the power of 9 e to the power of x. All right. x to the power of 9, is that what I have? Hmm. Did I mess something up? I think I messed something up. x to the power of yes i did mess something up oh i'm very sorry about that so we have our p is actually minus minus um minus four over four over x yes sorry so we ha we need a negative here there is a negative there there's gonna always be a negative and then there is also a negative here. So instead of x to the power of 4, it's just x to the power of negative 4. And I'm very sorry about that. This is live, so negative 4. Yes. So this is x to the power of negative 4, not x to the power of 4. x to the power of negative 4. All right. So... So we're going to multiply through by x to the power of negative 4. Let's see how that works out. x to the power of negative 4. And then you multiply that. So this will now be... You have x to the power of negative 4 time negative, times negative 4 over x. That will be negative uh, 4 x to the power of negative 5. And then this will give you, this will just give you x, right? Multiply x to the power of negative 4 by x to the power of negative 5. That will just give you x e to the x. Okay, good. Now, I claim that the left-hand side now is just the derivative d dx of my integrating factor times y. Check it. So this is first, look at this, this is first times the derivative of the second, right? Plus second times the derivative of the first. So if you do it well, if you find your integrating factor well, you will always end up with, you will always end up with the integrating factor, the derivative of the int integrating factor times y on the left-hand side. So this is equal to x e to the x. All right. So what do we have? We have d x to the power of negative 4 y is equal to x e to the x dx. Now what do you do? You put an integral in front of each of them integral sign. Uh, the left-hand side is a classic integration by parts problem and uh, the right-hand side, classic integration by parts problem. I'll let you do that. x is going to be x e to the x minus e to the x. Then you put your c here and then the right-hand side is, or the left-hand side is just going to be x to the negative 4 times y. Okay? So, this is your solution. This is your implicit solution. This is fine. Or uh, you can divide through by x if you want. You can say this is y is equal to... You can divide through by x to the power of negative 4 if you want. So this would be x to the power of 5 e to the x minus x to the power of 4 e to the x plus c x to the power of 4. I'm going to put a little caveat here. Uh, because we divide it through by x, so we are assuming, we're going to assume that x is greater than 0. So we're going to assume that x is greater than 0 for this solution. All right, so that's one example. Another example that I want you to try is um, how about dy dx? minus 3y is equal to 6. This is simple than what we did before, I think. I hope. Um, and then, number 3, 
How about x squared minus 9, y prime plus xy equal to 0? All right, what else can we do? We can do... Hmm... Yeah, let's try... Let's try number... Number four, uh, I want you to solve. So let's give you dy dx plus y equals f of x. So it's an initial value problem. Um, All right, I don't know if I want to give you this. So just try the two, that, this two, and I will see you in class. If you are taking the class, or I'll see you in the next video, if you're just an observer. Later.